get her attention. And then she feels the collar. She stops moving. As soon as she stops moving, the collar shuts off. Hi, Cat here with Quest, or with Rogue. You're Rogue, not Quest. Um, with Rogue here this morning to do her second live woe training session. Uh, if you were following along with Rogue's first live woe training video, the steps in that process of that video was first, we wanted to get her comfortable wearing the belly collar um, and moving with the belly collar. We used some homing pigeons, getting her comfortable chasing um, and moving with that belly collar. And that went pretty quickly for her. And then we switched to start using, using a little bit of stimulation on her belly and um, stopping her with that stimulation. So we moved through those two steps um, at her last session. And so today in this session, our goal is to um, get her belly collar on, uh, make sure she still feels comfortable moving around, and then move into stopping her with stimulation fairly quickly. And I'm gonna gauge her reaction and I'm gonna start trying to move around a little bit. Anytime she moves, I'm gonna use some simulation and stop her again. Um, and we're gonna see how well she can do with that. So we're gonna build some consistency, do a little conditioning, build some reps. But um, also in our last live video, there was a question after we finished filming on how to put the belly collar on. So I wanna make sure that I take a little bit of time and that Ethan gets a chance to get up here so I can show that a little bit closer. So the belly collar is, goes right around their belly, just like it sounds. Get my transmitter out of the way. And you just snug it up like you would on their neck collar. So I wanna be able to get a few fingers under that collar strap like that. I want, oops, <laughs> Rogue keeps squirreling around. So I want to be able to not pull this box away and see any separation between her belly and the collar box because I want those contacts to be able to make constant contact um, because that's what's going to allow our consistency in this training session. And then I'm just going to tuck the collar strap up out of the way. Like I mentioned in the first video, um, some dogs are going to react a little bit differently to the stimulation on their belly. And if that collar strap is slapping around and they have access to it, there's a chance that she might try and bite or nibble at that collar strap and we don't want her to do that. So she is moving around pretty good with that belly collar again, which is what we want to see. Uh, like I had mentioned in the first video, I'm going to try and avoid using much neck collar um, because we've primarily use the neck collar for recall situations or for movement to go get on her dog bed. And so we want um, to be working on not moving, which is what woe is. So I'm gonna just be using her belly collar. I'm gonna have the um, constant stimulation and I'm just gonna be using a one. So I'm gonna get her attention. And then she feels the collar. She stops moving. As soon as she stops moving, the collar shuts off. Now I haven't used the Q Woe yet, but as we can see, okay, I'm gonna release her, let her run around a little bit. She's gonna feel collar, stops moving, collar shuts off. Okay, so I'm, she's exhibiting the behavior that we're looking for, Woe, fairly consistently now when she feels that belly collar. So I'm also gonna be able to start introducing that cue woe at this point. So we're gonna get her moving because I need her to be moving in order to stop her. If she's already stopped and she feels the belly collar, well, what she, she gets confused like, well, I'm not moving, which is what you want. So why am I feeling the belly collar? So we get her moving, feels the stimulation, stops moving, stimulation shuts off, starts moving, shuts off. Whoop. Whoa. Whoop. Whoa. 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 Okay. So I'm going to let her get moving again. Feel the stimulation on her belly. Whoop. As soon as she stops moving, it shuts off. If she starts moving again, I'm using constant simulation. I might have to turn it up one level. There we go. I turned it up to a two because she was still moving through that. Whoop. 
Whoa. As soon as she stops moving, collar shuts off. I'm starting, whoop. Starting to move around a little bit, whoop. Just taking, whoop, a few baby steps. Okay. Um, and as you can see, she is starting to move when I move. So she's cueing my movement and noticing my movement as a way to, for her to keep moving. So I'm going to call her, not call her back, but have her come back. She feels the collar, whoop. Whoa. Little bit of movement again. Whoa. Okay. But when I'm moving, she sometimes starts keying off of that and her feet start moving. So I want to make sure that um, she's not moving as much as possible. So if that means I have to just do more reps and build more conditioning. Whoop. Whoa. And less movement of my feet. We can do that too. Whoop. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. So right now my collar's on a two. The one wasn't quite enough and she wasn't quite stopping with it, so we needed a little more stimulation. Every dog is going to be different. Some dogs might need more than that. Some dogs might need less. So, I'm going to do a few more reps here. <whistles> Come on, Rogue. Whoop. Whoop. Whoa. 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 So as you can see, we've already made a little bit of progress and improvement where when she gets stopped, I'm able to take a few more steps and move around a little bit more without her moving as well. But I'm ready with the collar in anticipation that she's gonna move at some point in time so that I can correct her uh, movement right away. Whoop, whoa, <laughs> whoa. So she's definitely feeling the two. I'm gonna go down to a one again on the collar. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, because as you can see on that last one, she's definitely feeling it. She almost did a wheelie on that one. So I want enough stimulation that she's feeling it and responding to the stimulation, but not too much that um, it's affecting our training session. So come on. Whoop. We're still just using a one, whoop. <laughs> I will say that this is probably one of the first for me with a dog that's basically standing on their front legs when they're stopping. Cause she's definitely feeling that stimulation. Whoa. She's allowing me to do a little more walking around. Whoa. Whoop. She tried to take a couple steps and I stopped her. Whoa. I don't know if you can see, but as I get a little bit closer to her, her body language changes and she kind of tenses up like she's ready to move. So I don't want to push the envelope too much with that. But my goal is to be able to reach in and touch her at one point, which we're not there yet. Okay. Baby steps, we'll get there. It doesn't all have to happen in one training session. So I'm not using any stimulation with her right now. I'm just trying to get her a little bit farther away from me for stopping her. Whoop. <laughs> Whoa. Maybe, maybe Rogue should join the circus. I don't know. If bird dogging doesn't work out for her, maybe, maybe you'll see her in Cirque du Soleil or something. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. So, okay. So something I can also do is, so when she's moving, I'm stopping her using continuous, come back, don't knock the camera guy over. Um, I'm stopping her using continuous stimulation. Now when I walk, start to approach her, and I see her body starting to tense to anticipate movement, I can actually nick her then. So using the momentary stimulation on the collar, um, same level as a one as we were with the continuous stimulation, just one little tap to remind her, hey, don't move. You know what you're supposed to be doing, which is stopping and standing there. I see you anticipating moving or one little foot might move. And that's when I want to say, nope, you need to keep your feet there. Don't move. And that's where I can use the nick in those situations. So I'll show you what that looks like here. Get her stopped. Whoop. Whoa. So I move around. Whoa. So that was just a nick. She moved that one little paw, she felt the nick. Whoa. There was another little nick. Whoa. And when I'm nicking her, I'm saying whoa is, hey, remember, stay standing, don't move. That's what this belly collar stimulation that you're feeling means. Whoa. 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 Almost can touch her. Not quite. That's pushing the envelope, she said, Mom. Don't get greedy in your training sessions. Okay. We'll do one more good one. Whoop. Whoa. Move around her a little bit. Whoa. She moves her feet. She feels a nick. Whoa. Okay. Release her. Come up here, put a little call, um, the lead on her so I can answer some questions real quick. Stop. Settle down. So in our um, second training session here with working on Woe, we made a lot of improvement. Um, just like in our first video, she was stopping when she felt the belly collar. But as you saw from the beginning to the end of this training session, I was able to do a lot more movement around her, which is gonna be important because when you Woe a dog out in the field, you're then going to move ahead of them to flush the bird. And if they're going to move when you move, then they're not fully woe trained yet. Um, so we want her to be able to stop and stand there, stay there when I'm moving around her, even to the point where I can come up and pet her and leave her. Now I tried to do that a couple times in this session. She wasn't ready for it. I got a little greedy trying to see if I could push, you know, and challenge her and push the envelope a little bit more. And she's not quite ready for that. So that just means we need to do a few more reps, a little more conditioning um, before we move on to the next step. So. We'll continue to work on that. Uh, she did really well though with this next session. Were there any questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much for tuning in and we'll be back with Rogue's next WOE training session shortly.